All right. Um, my name is Peter Kovla, and I want to tell you a little bit about the uh, Iwata Cycle platform that we have been developing over the course of many years now. Um, let me briefly introduce uh, the, the uh, context. So it's all about hydrological modeling. And what we are trying to do with those hydrological models is, for example, if you have uh, rainfall uh, over a certain area, you will expect this accumulates, it collects in a river, and that river then discharges towards the sea or the ocean or whatsoever. And we want to be able to model this process to understand, for example, how much discharge there will be at any point to uh, assess flood risks and that sort of uh, things. So that's what, what we are using these models for. Um, and hydrological models come in very different uh, shapes, um, but all of them typically need some information about the forcing, what we call forcing data. So that's information about the rainfall, the weather, also maybe a little bit of sunshine to know how much water evaporates again into the sky and so on. And these data are typically big. They are time dependent. They come from multiple different sources and they come in different formats. So uh, a lot of differences there. Um, what each model also needs is some kind of uh, parameters. And this can be a few parameters about how the physics work, but it can also be, uh, if you have a big gridded hydrological model, uh, it can be uh, maps in very high resolution sometimes about soil types and so on. Uh, again, from different sources in different formats and so on. These can also be very big and also between different sources there can be inconsistencies between them. And then uh, there is the model itself and again we have a lot of differences. There can be different programming languages used to implement the model. There can be different physical representations of certain hydrological processes. Um, so the point here is that if you want to do hydrological modeling there's a lot of different challenges that you have to face, that you have to solve. And because of this, all models that we find in practice are very, very different. And it's difficult to work with another model if you're used to working with your own model, for example. It's difficult to exchange them. And that's what we're trying to address in the water cycle. Um, so how do we do that? Um, first of all, we have a common model interface. And um, for the people that are not familiar with a lot of technologies, that this just means that you can talk to your model from within a, a, a Python notebook and uh, you can exchange it for another model and the way you talk to the model will be the same. So there will be, for example, model.update and uh, then it will go one time step further. Um, for the people that do know about all the technologies, uh, the way we achieve this is by packaging all the models inside Docker containers, wrapping them with an interface package called BMI, the Basic Modeling Interface. Um, and then being able to communicate with that, we use gRPC, uh, we have a special package gRPC for BMI to communicate with those models inside those containers from a client. Um, so even if the models are written in, in, in Fortran or C or whatsoever, um, we can use them in Python and they will all look the same. Second component is an online modeling environment. Um, because sometimes it can be a pain to install a model on your computer and then even if you manage to install it, it can be too big to run or whatsoever. Um, so we also try to take uh, those problems out of your hands by uh, hosting this entire analysis platform on uh, special computers uh, offered by SURF, so infrastructure offered by SURF. Uh, which means that a user is just able to go to a web address, log in with uh, some user ID and a password, and then they will be able to use those compute resources where the models are already installed, where the data is already available, and so on. So we take out also a lot of the configuration that can be very challenging. Um, finally, uh, we are also offering code to help, for example, with those pre-processing steps. So I mentioned before that all the forcing data comes in different formats, uh, different variable names, and so on. And we use a, uh, a pre-processing pipeline using ESM Faltu that was just presented before uh, to take all these different data sources and then, uh, for example, cut out a, a specific catchment that we want and then convert it to the right input format that is understood by the model. Um, so that is a very brief overview of uh, how we solve these challenges. Um, 
what it looks like is this. Uh, you go on your laptop, you go to this uh, website that I mentioned, you will be presented with this beautiful interface where you even have a visual layout where you can select certain catchments and so on. Um, this will help you to bootstrap an experiment so you can very easily get started. Uh, once you do that, you end up in a Jupyter Notebook environment where you have access to the eWaterCycle Python package, which comes with observations, parameter sets, models, forcing data, and analysis. So this will be a, a, a common environment where you can do all your experiments uh, in a very simple way. So to summarize, uh, in eWaterCycle, we try to remove a lot of the barriers uh, and challenges that are encountered in uh, working with complex hydrological models and hopefully this will make it uh, again easier and more fun for researchers and users of hydrological models to use these models and eventually uh, everybody benefits. So that's it, thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you very much uh, Peter for this very nice presentation. Um, yes, questions? Uh, my colleagues. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm one person is sometimes not sufficient. <laughs> So, uh, currently we have focused mostly on use cases where we do forward modeling. Um, in principle, well, I, I think we can discuss it after the break, uh, what would be necessary to also facilitate those uh, backward modeling use cases. Um, um, in, in principle, we just try to uh, provide an interface to the model that the user can then control, right? So I can imagine that uh, you would have to, uh, well, it, it would be possible, but you would have to, uh, depending on how much work it is. Exactly. I'm not sure and if it's. Because I'm thinking, for example, if you want to put yeah. this I inside an MCMC algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, the latency problems and all the little mm -hmm. components that you have in between, you know, sometimes yes. it just makes it impractical. Yes, so exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We will have lunch for, for discussion. Yes, Ijan. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, I ha also have a question, maybe, but before uh, my question, briefly to JC uh, uh, on your comments. Uh, so it depends on what kind of model you incorporated into the e-water cycle platform. So if your model can do this inverse exactly. modeling, yeah, then Lang is okay, but another point is the data simulation can be easily exported with the eWater cycle platform as well, I guess, right? <laughs> I think that is a part of the eWater cycle. And my question is links to um, um, uh, the, a new project. Actually, we also collaborate with eWater cycle, mm -hmm. and currently, as you, I showed before, we have different models. So, mm -hmm. Stemoscope, we have mm -hmm. BMI exposed. So, I suppose mm -hmm. that can be fitting in water cycle platform easily. But then if there is uh, uh, different models like uh, SEPs, like uh, uh, other models, uh, I mean, I'm not sure in this new project with Lof Hut, uh, mm -hmm. if this will be supported mm -hmm. by eScience Center or to, so using different programming uh, uh, language. And then we're trying to also link up with eWaterCycle platform. So uh, in, in the eWater Cycle project, we have a sort of step-by-step -step guide uh, how to add new models to the platform. Um, so by following the steps in principle, we could add other models as well. That includes wrapping that model in a BMI interface, putting it inside the container and so on. But once those steps are done, then we should be able to interface them through uh, the eWater Cycle platform. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Peter, for the, your presentation.